Hello and welcome to the Wood Framing Wall Plus Getting Started video number 7. This time we're going to make unique framing modifications without changing the linked framing configurations. We're going to focus on these commands and as you can see there are quite a lot of features to explore but since this is just a getting started video we will look at the most popular ones. So let's start off by looking at the modify frame command. So I have framed two identical wall instances that belong to the same wall type and are therefore linked with the same framing configuration. But let's say that we want this particular wall instance to have a slightly different frame. We can obviously go ahead and create new framing configurations. However, we would then also need to create a new wall type, link the configuration and so on and so forth. In order to save time, we can use a feature called Modify frame. The purpose of this feature is to make unique framing configurations to a selected wall instance without modifying framing configurations linked to a wall type. For example, let's pick any framing element within this wall instance. And now in this window, you can choose which framing settings you want to modify, just like in the frame configurations dialog. The only exception is that there are no opening settings, but there is a separate modification command for openings that we will explore a bit later. Right now, let's make some changes. For example, we can set the top offset of the frame from the wall by 300 millimeters. We can then make changes to the top plate by adding a rotated top cover. We can also make some changes to noggin elements. So for example, we can, uh, by ticking this box, we can make every second horizontal noggin element vary in offset height from the bottom of the wall. And as you can see, we have a new top offset and a top cover. The noggin has also been updated. And remember that the unique framing settings we applied to this wall instance didn't affect the framing configurations linked to this wall type. So even if I created a new wall instance, it would, it would still be framed using the original framing configuration. In the meantime, if you want to make any changes to the wall instance itself, for example, you need to raise the wall height by 500 millimeters then the unique framing settings will be retained so long as you use the update frame command. And as you can see, the modified frame has been automatically updated. As you already know, these unique framing modifications apply only to this wall instance, but we can create a new framing configuration based on these settings by navigating to save configuration and then we need to pick any element. And now you can type in any name you want. And as a result, this new configuration will appear in the framing configurations dialog, and it can also be linked with any wall type. If you decided that you no longer want to use these unique framing settings, then you can always restore the original framing by updating the wall by link, or by reframing the wall with the frame wall command. Now let's look at the modify opening command. With this feature, you can apply unique framing modifications to a selected opening instance. It's very useful when you need some particular opening instances to have different framing. For example, these two windows belong to the same wall type, but if we clicked on this window, we can make framing changes specifically to this window instance. For example, let's make some changes to the header by removing the rotated headers. And then we can also reduce the horizontal header count to just one. By the way, if you want to learn more about opening configurations, don't forget to check the wood framing wall plus tutorial in number five. And as a result, the framing around this window instance has been updated without affecting the linked window configuration. Again, if there are any changes to the position of an opening instance, uh, for example, let's say that the client wants to move this window to the right, 
but also wants to keep its unique framing settings, then we can simply click on update frame command and pick any framing element. Now let's look at the wall joints. There are two different ways you can apply unique framing settings to a selected wall join instance. For example, you can click on modify frame and then head to any connection settings on the left. Notice that there are two tabs, one for free start and the other for L inner corner connection. That's because the tool recognizes what types of joints this wall instance has at the start and at the end of the wall. If you want to learn more about wall joint configurations in general, check out the Wood Framing Wall Plus tutorial number 4. In the meantime, the second way to apply unique framing settings to a wall join is by using Modify Wall Join feature under Modify Other. With this feature, you can choose any wall join you want to modify in the model. So for example, let's choose this butt end connection here. As you can see, the software has recognized the connection type. Then we can add one more identical stud. As a result, only this wall join has been updated and you can see the differences between these unique framing settings and the original framing configurations. So this is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and until the next time.